in Tai Chi, there's something called the empty step. In Tai Chi, you, 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 there's a yang leg and a yin leg. The yin leg is empty, and now I switch yin and yang. And now I'm going to switch yin and yang. But many people walk and they, they just shift the weight prematurely. So if you shift the weight not prematurely, then I can check, ah, my yang leg is really yang and my yin leg is really yin by just touching the ground like this. So here on the piano, I'm going to do the same thing. And now look how well this finger is standing. It's standing beautifully. It can even wobble around and rotate and do stuff without losing its integrity, without collapsing in the slightest within itself. So there's this tremendous integrity of structure in the hand. Now Leopold Mozart, Wolfgang's father, wrote that when you play a melody, Every successive note of the melody should have a new color. And he's talking about the harpsichord. Well, that thing just goes pling, pling, pling. Well, if you have hundreds of degrees of overholding and hundreds of degrees of separating and articulation, and you can manage it all because you're not falling down on the keys but standing up on the keys, so you can control precisely the next note, and you're controlling the flow of those notes with your wrist, then there's a possibility to create a new color on every note. Uh, but what, for that, you need the clear division of labor. The fingers produce the sonority, and the arm and the wrist join the sonorities. It's a very, very clear division of labor. So. Let's, let's examine some of these schools of piano technique. There's the finger action school, which is a misinterpretation of harpsichord technique. And now the fingers are moving, but the arm is no longer joining them together. And it comes out ricky ticky 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 This ends up creating a, a tension in the arm, which can even lead, in, in extreme cases, to injury. So not only is it musically sterile, it's also physically dangerous. Now, the arm weight technique came along and to solve this problem. And the assumption was that the heavier action of the piano needs the weight of the arm to help the finger get the key down. So now the finger has to be stronger, but why does the finger have to be stronger? Because now it's carrying the entire weight of the arm, which actually has nothing to do with putting a key down. And so it, they tried to solve one problem and they made it worse. Because now there's this compression of the hand. Uh, but actually, that's not the way arm weight was originally taught. The way arm weight was originally taught, I went to Carola Grindia, the founder of EPTA, the, uh, the European Piano Teachers Association. She was mentored by Dame Myra Hess, the great British pianist, who was a student of Tobias Mathai, who developed the arm weight technique. The first thing she had me do was flop. And now, I told her that that's, uh, that's great as a didactic experience because it relaxes you, but you can't play like that. And the first time we met, it was in a conference, and, and I followed her. This is in Trinity College, London, and I said in my talk, well, it's a wonderful didactic uh, technique, but you can't play like that. And immediately, Carola in the front row, I beg to differ. <laughs> and so our first interaction was a public argument. <laughs> and then I found out she's from Romania, Eastern Europeans. They love to argue. So <laughs> anyway, it developed into a wonderful friendship and a collaboration. The next thing she told me in the lesson was, now drop the arm down and play a note. Drop the arm down and play a note. Now. Did you notice that it wasn't a very loud note? So now I'm really going to use the arm weight to play that note. Right? So obviously that I'm sensing the weight of the arm not to transmit the weight of the arm to the key. I'm sensing the weight of the arm to relax it so that I can feel everything in my arm better. And so the tiny little muscles in here, which I might, I might not even be aware of, are actually manipulating that key as the arm drops. And the proof of the pudding was in the next step of the lesson where she said, now do the same thing while going up. So where's the weight of the arm now? 
the weight of the arm. I'm sensing the weight of my arm, but it's not falling. It's rising. Therefore, although it still has weight, in functionally it is now weightless. It is floating. Again, floating freely, allowing these tiny little muscles in here to manipulate the key in a very specific and precise way to give me just the sound I want. So how does that compare to how many of us have been taught arm weight technique? 